Good evening. Let's have our choir come. Amen. We want to welcome you tonight, Tri State Baptist Temple. Take a hymn book, turn to hymn 223, hymn 223, and we'll stand together tonight. We want to sing Victory in Jesus. Let's stand together. Amen. 
Amen. We're glad you're here tonight and just looking forward to spending some time uh, in the Bible together today. And uh, so we're thankful to be, be able just to get together. We I want to have a word of prayer. Just ask the Lord to bless our time together and you know, just help us to be prepared for uh, our service today. Steve, will you pray for us? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated and we'll listen to our choir.
Hey, me and our choir is going to come down. We invite you just to stand for a moment and stretch your legs. And we'll greet one another and we'll try to practice uh, uh, non-contact again tonight. But we want to greet one another and we'll spend a good time together. Well, we're going to sing this chorus together before we finish up. If you don't know it yet, it's in the bulletin. Let the Lord have his way. All right, help me sing it. Let the Lord have his way in your life every day. There's no rest. There's no peace until the Lord has his way. Place your life in his hand. Rest secure in his plan. Let the Lord, let the Lord have his way. Let the Lord have his way in your life every day. There's no rest. There's no peace until the Lord has his way. Place your life in his hand, rest secure in his plan, let the Lord, let the Lord have his way. Amen. Thank you so much. You could be seated, and we are glad that you're here tonight, and I uh, appreciated a great message we heard this morning, and looking forward to a uh, good message again tonight, And uh, uh, but we're glad you're here. We want to remind you that Dr. Geiler and the Marietta Bible College Choir are planning on being here tomorrow at 7 o'clock, and so we, we're looking forward to that and excited to uh, uh, hear from that choir and spend some time with Dr. Geiler, and so we hope you can come and be a part of that tomorrow. We are feeding the choir, and if you've signed up to be a part of that, uh, please have uh, those things ready, and, and I think they're going to begin working on the meal about 1 o'clock, and so if you'd like to come and help, uh, they'll be here about 1 o'clock to begin on that, so you come and be a part of it. Uh, we are going to, after the service tonight, just have a short time for our, one of our family fun day fellowships and, and uh, just have some banana splits after the service, so you're welcome to come over to the ministry center when we get finished and uh, enjoy uh, some banana splits together before we go home today, but uh, we are uh, 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 excited about doing that throughout the year, just having some different times of fellowship and different fun activities, and so we're thankful to do that uh, tonight. Uh, don't forget about, uh, just as Easter is approaching, to uh, be using the materials, and, and our choir is going to continue to practice at 5 o'clock on Sunday nights and, and prepare, uh, as we prepare for that. So uh, we're excited about all these things that are coming up. Uh, but we'll have uh, our ushers come tonight, and uh, we'll take up our regular tithes and offerings and, and our missions offering tonight. Amen. Let's pray together.
All right. Well, it is a blessing to see you this evening. We are thankful you came out. Looking forward to uh, just a little bit of time of fun tonight after the service is over. And uh, so uh, we hope that you brought in some bananas and some ice cream and those kind of things, and we'll share that together. And uh, I had uh, brought a couple things over and forgot to go back and get the whipped cream. I had to go back and get that out of the refrigerator. So, so there's a little bit of that, I know. Uh, but we're glad you're here and thankful to be here uh, in a good place tonight. Uh, Dr. Geiler and I spoke this afternoon, and they are ready to come and ready to go. They're excited about being here tomorrow evening, and uh, so just be planning on it. And at 7 o'clock, uh, the service will begin, and there will be about 50 of those students, and they're going to just share their whole uh, pre-spring tour program with us and share it and sing and they're going to do a great job, and we don't want you to miss that. So be inviting people to come and uh, tell them about the meeting and tell them we're doing everything we can here just to stay safe, and uh, they'll be able to clean their hands and sanitize their hands and all those kind of things that we need to do and uh, just uh, have a good evening, uh, just a, a time of rejoicing uh, in the midst of a lot of craziness that's going on all around us. So uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, and we look forward to that. That'll be a great meeting. Well, uh, Sunday nights, we just take a moment just to focus on church camp. Church camp will be here before you know it. It's the first full week of June, and uh, we're looking forward to a great, uh, a great week. And so we want uh, all of our boys and girls here that can come and help us take up our offering. We receive a change offering on Sunday night. And maybe you have some pocket change, and you'd like to just make a donation to camp and just prepare for it. Uh, but don't forget that we want to be doing something at home in preparation for church camp so that when it comes time to, to give and uh, to, to bring in uh, those special offerings uh, for camp, we'll already have had a head start on that. We'll be all ready to go uh, with those offerings. So uh, let's just uh, pray together, and our boys and girls here will help us out. Lord, we thank you for being good to us, and thank you for a good evening. We can join together here. And uh, Lord, we thank you, God, that you are a God who... Uh, knows all things and always are in control and you know God uh, yesterday today and tomorrow and uh, we can just trust and look to you and we just ask your blessings on this offering and Lord we think ahead to camp and uh, Lord we pray that God you'll uh, just uh, send every boy and girl to camp that you would have go and God we know that you're seeking them out you want to meet them and Lord you want them to know you and uh, so help us, Lord, as a local church, just to be ready and prepared for that. And uh, Lord, just speak to families about going that week and uh, just investing it in that uh, camp. And uh, they'll be blessed by it. And God, they'll be strengthened through that experience. And so we look to you for a great, uh, a great year. And so uh, we're thankful tonight for this time. And I ask your blessings on the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have some change, just hold your hand up. And we're going to come by and pick it up for you. <coughs>
appreciate our orchestra and the choir doing a good job today. And uh, we had mentioned Wednesday night we were in hopes of having our new choir seats in place for today. The uh, company we bought them from called me uh, early in the week and said they'll be here. We'll have them delivered on Friday. I told the church Wednesday night and they made me a liar and uh, called Thursday morning and said, oh, pastor, they have got left on the dock in Indianapolis, didn't get loaded on the truck. And uh, we don't think they'll be there till Monday. So, uh, all right, okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's what happened. But we just had to move them off anyway tonight for tomorrow. So, uh, so that worked out all right. But it is awkward every now and then. There's just, you're stuck, like Evan said, with nowhere to sit down when you need to for just a minute or two. But we'll, we'll get that worked out. And our choir's doing a good job practicing and working through their preparation for their Easter program and uh, it is difficult because they really need to hear that music, and uh, it, it, it needs, they need to be up here. We'll get them up here, Lord willing, by next week, and they'll, they'll be in good shape. But we're thankful you are here. Appreciate you coming out, and it's great to see you here. Of course, a lot of changes. There's more information. Uh, our governor's making different decisions that seemingly just uh, at a moment's notice, and so we're just trying to keep track of all these different kinds of things that are going on. Uh, other states are also making other types of uh, decisions that are affecting churches and people across the country. I know that Virginia's governor has made a, a, a law that, uh, you know, if you have a, uh, a gathering of 100 or more people, then that's going to have to be suspended for a while. And so uh, Chill Howie had to cancel their services this night, tonight because of that governmental decree. And I know other states have been uh, pressed into that. Daniel, Kentucky's had similar statements made by their government and leadership and different people. So we're just monitoring all these things as well as we can. But uh, we're thankful people. We are in the Lord's hands, aren't we? And, uh, you know, uh, if uh, w we believe in God, that God has a will for our life and a plan. And so uh, we're trusting his will and plan. We're trusting him just to keep us safe. And, and uh, we're using wisdom uh, as we can and doing the best we can. Uh, we're, uh, we're just trusting the Lord, though. So, uh, so we don't have plans to uh, cancel, uh, suspend, or do anything any differently uh, unless we're just uh, made to do that uh, by other forces and powers. Uh, but uh, you pray for uh, all these things. We want to uh, say thanks to people this morning who just lended a hand and helped us do a lot of cleaning and sanitizing. It didn't take long to get a lot of extra things done, and we want to continue to do that. Uh, we want to not forget things like hymn books, just wiping them down and all those kind of things periodically and try to do the very best we can. Uh, but we are thankful. Pray for uh, our daycare uh, with schools that have now been closed. Uh, we do have a number of school-age children who come in the mornings and then would come in the evenings. And it is challenging to have that dynamic. Uh, now they will be with us in our daycare and preschool. Our preschool is still trying to get their year done. And so that brings a whole other dynamic into the building when you have those school age kids and then you've got those preschool children who are trying to listen to their teacher and get their work done and all those kind of things. So it's a whole different challenge. Uh, so pray about all those things and we know the Lord will help us and work all those things out. But we are thankful uh, people tonight. It, it, Dr. Geiler, did, uh, we did uh, speak this afternoon and just wanted to be sure about tomorrow, and, and uh, they, are, they are good to go. He's ready to come, and he sounds pretty good, and the choir sounds like they're ready, and so we're going to just uh, host them tomorrow night, and uh, it'll be a once-in-a-year event that you don't want to miss that, and uh, we're thankful uh, that we can do it, and so you just uh, encourage people, and uh, you know, uh, we are people who are to walk and live by faith, aren't we? But that really has a very small voice until there's a time when we can live by faith. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to live by faith right now. And, and other people can see that. And, uh, and so uh, we want to uh, just encourage people uh, to, to come tomorrow night and hear the choir and hear Dr. Geiler. And we want to be a blessing to them. And I hope you'll... Uh, be considering giving and we take up a love offering for the school and it helps them. It helps uh, provide the resources they need to feed and house those kids and, and provide them the education they're getting. So, uh, so just come and be ready to give and invest in the school and be blessed and I know 
uh, you'll have a great, a great evening uh, tomorrow night. Uh, so we're thankful, thankful people. Uh, if you have your Bible tonight, take it and open it with us uh, to the book of Deuteronomy, the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. We mentioned this morning we originally had Josh uh, scheduled to preach tonight, and uh, he's not felt well. And uh, has he had a good day, Kayla, pretty good day today? About the same as he has been? <clears throat> well, we want to pray for him. He'll get healed up and get better and feeling better here soon. But we'll get him scheduled again. So, uh, so uh, we're supposed to be ready and instant in season and out of season as a preacher, aren't we? So, uh, so we're going to be ready. And uh, you take your Bible and look with us to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And, of course, the thought for the year for us is to rise up and build to rise up and build. And tonight I want you to think about rising up and building by remembering. Uh, we're talking about building strong biblical families and strong biblical relationships and marriages and homes and our church, strengthening it so that we can further God's work, rising up together and building. And of course, Nehemiah is the book that we have been going to and we've been working our way through that book, and we'll continue to look at the truths we find there uh, in that book of the Bible. But with that thought, I want you to consider rising up and building by remembering. And I want to read to you a passage here, Deuteronomy chapter 32, beginning in verse number 1, and uh, I'll read down to verse number 8, and uh, we'll look at uh, what the Word of God has to say here today. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is, is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. I will stop right there, but I want you to consider that thought with me tonight, to rise up and build by remembering. Lord, we are blessed today. We thank you that we can be here, and uh, Lord, we ask your blessings on those, God, who uh, are not able to come, and Lord, we pray you'd uh, heal up those that are not well and just strengthen those that are weak, and uh, God, touch hearts and minds and give clarity of mind and heart, and Lord, just, uh, we just don't want to forget those who, God, have been such a faithful part and presence in this local church for so long, and Lord, now they're at a season of life where they're not able to come, so we want to Lord, I ask you to just draw near to them and bless them and, and encourage them. And Lord, others, God, tonight, so much that uh, we're seeing all around us. And uh, Lord, we pray for, uh, Lord, folks, that God, they'll be a spirit of peace and one of trust and faith. And uh, Lord, we'll just look to you in this, uh, in this time. God, you're a God we can trust in the, in the difficult times, in the in the times of trouble and, and when the world is not at rest, we can find rest and peace in you. And so, Lord, let us be faithful. And uh, we just ask your blessings now. As we've read your word, we pray you'd empower it, and quicken it, and help us tonight, Lord, grow our faith and strengthen us that we might build God uh, in our relationship with you. And, uh, Lord, show us the importance of remembering and, uh, Lord, we ask your blessings again tonight. And uh, we trust, Lord, maybe someone has come to church, but they've never received you as their personal Savior. God, tonight, tonight would be that night when, Lord, they'll realize their need, and, God, they'll see that you're the answer. And uh, we look to you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. Well, I hope you'll take your Bible, and in verse number 7, just mark that word, remember. 
remember. I'm thankful for memories. Some of them are, are not always pleasant, are they? We have some tough ones, some hard memories, but I'm thankful for so many others that are, that are blessings when we think back about them. Uh, times that we can think back on in our life, and, and uh, they still bring uh, joy to our heart. They still bring uh, a thankfulness that we were able to be that or experience that or, or these things. Some things in our life are, are vivid, just like they had just occurred. They'll, they'll be things that will always be with us. We, we sometimes have those moments in life. We remember where we were and what we were doing when some certain such thing happened, and uh, we're thankful that we can remember. You know, as a, as a, as a man, uh, I, I, uh, I have man thoughts, I guess, as I think back on childhood. And, of course, I think about, you know, Little Lee and all those kind of things. And, and uh, boy, they still bring, you know, great memories to my mind. I, I, I was just thinking about the other day. I, I remember when I first started playing Little League baseball. Uh, I, went, I was in the Rock Hill School District. Rock Hill didn't have organized sports or Little League till you were in the fifth grade. And I wanted to play before then, so I know my mom took me into Ironton. They had a little t-ball league in there before anybody did, so uh, she took me in there even as a young child. But but to really play ball, I didn't get to play till I was five. And boy, I was living for it till I was able to do it. And my baseball hero was Johnny Bench. Now, if you don't know who Johnny Bench is, you need to Google him and find out he was the greatest catcher to ever play baseball. And uh, and so he was my childhood hero. And so when we met together, we picked, the teams were picked, and I, I got on this team, and uh, there was a, a man that, uh, his son was in my grade in school. We were in school together, but he had a floor covering business in Ironton, and he was our, uh, our we were on that team, you know, so he bought our jerseys and our uniforms. We were, we were red, white, and blue, you know, and, uh, and so uh, we met together for that first little practice on a little old field behind the, the grade school, I went to grade school, and so we're all standing around there, and there's just some dads that are coaching. They don't know what to do. This first time they've ever done this, we're all standing around there, these boys, and so they're trying to decide who's going to do what and what's going to be uh, here and who's going to play where. And, uh, you know, if you've ever been around baseball or softball, uh, it's one of the hardest things to do is find a catcher because most people don't want to stand, sit back there and have a ball thrown at them or a bat being swung around their head. They just don't want that. They don't like that. And so that was one of the big things, you know, who's going to do that? And so I said, Coach, I'd like to try. I mean, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I can remember, boy, putting those knee pads on. They were old, used, scuffed up things that weren't nothing but a piece of plastic and an old helmet. Uh, we didn't have a helmet. I had a ball cap and a mask. That's all we had. Didn't have a helmet, you know. And uh, I had just my regular glove. We didn't even have a catcher's mitt. Uh, but, but boy, I did it. And you know what I found out? I, I wasn't bad at it. And I did it. I, I played that position. And uh, I did it my, all, all the way till I was a junior in high school. And my coach said, no, I, want you, I want you playing second base. I need you back out in the field. So so we switched and moved out there. But I'll never forget those memories and all those things. And they're so vivid, the memories of that. And you know, I still run into those guys that were my coaches at the fifth grade. And, uh, and you know what? It's true for them. <laughs> they start talking about all the memories of that team and what we did and how fun it was. And uh, I'm thankful that we can have those types of memories in life those things the Lord allows us to have. I'm blessed by the memories that I have of, of the life that God has allowed me to live. Uh, but, you know, the journey's not over yet. There's still much more out there for us, and so we have to keep moving forward. And, uh, you know, I think about the future. I'm not the first pastor the church has had. Uh, this church got organized and had a man here and pastored this church for a short time, and then Brother Earl Sammons came and pastored this church for over 30 years. And then, and then he stepped away, and then the Lord brought us here. And now we've been here for 13 years. And uh, between me and Pastor Sammons together, that's a long time, you know, for just a couple men uh, to be at this church. But, you know, if the Lord doesn't come soon, 
I'm not going to be the last pastor this church has. There'll be a day when there'll be another pastor if the Lord doesn't come. And, uh, you know, I think about the time that the Lord allows me to be here. It, it's my prayer that some of you will think back and remember. I was there when Pastor Jenkins was my pastor. And, uh, and I hope that you'll remember uh, and have some fond memories, some things that you'll be blessed to remember uh, as you move forward in your journey in life. I hope you'll be able to think back and say, you know, he tried to honor the Lord and what he did. He, he tried to stand on scriptural truth. I hope you'll remember that he tried to keep a biblical focus uh, and, uh, and that when we needed him, when we needed him, he would be there for us. And uh, I pray your memories of me and my family will be a blessing. Uh, when God spoke to Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 32, he told his people here to remember, to remember. What, what was his purpose? Uh, why did he want them looking back to the past? They certainly weren't where he wanted them to be. They weren't at the end of their journey. They were still in the journey. But the truth of the matter is, they were never going to get to the end of the journey unless they remembered some things. And so we find in verse 7, he said, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. And I think about all the Lord has done to bring us to where we are today. I think about all the things God has done that we are able to have what we have today. And we must gain an appreciation and an attitude of gratitude for these things. And I want you just to notice these simple things with me tonight. Write down, if you will, remember how the Lord sought us. Remember how he sought us. In verse number 8, the Bible said, when, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. God, God looked into this world and he sought out a people that would be a people that would bear his name in the world. He looked for a people. He sought, he sought them out. He, he found them. He found those people. And, and those people became the nation of Israel, the people of God. He sought them out. You know, God is looking today. He's searching, seeking for someone among all the rest. Uh, someone whom he can bless. Someone that he will use for his name and glory. He wants to use someone to be a blessing to someone else. He's seeking that. He is looking for that. God is looking. He found a man named Abraham. Abram. And, and he spoke to Abram. And he said, listen, Abram, if you'll follow me, I will bless you and I will multiply you. And through you, all the world will be blessed. That was the promise that he made that man by the name of Abram. And Abram followed him. And Abraham became that father of the nation of Israel. And we know that today, truly, every human being on planet Earth is blessed because God found a man like Abram. And through Abram and Abram's seed, there was born into this world a Savior, Jesus Christ. And through that Savior, all men have the opportunity to be blessed. And so God was seeking. God was looking. God is looking today. God, God can use the few to bless the many. You read through the book of Deuteronomy and God's constantly reminding His people of that. He's constantly reminding them that they were not the biggest group of people. They were not the most powerful group of people. They did not have the most of all the people in the world. In fact, he said you were often the least and you had the less. But he said you had me and that made the difference. And God will take the few and he will bless the many. He's looking into a church like our church for just a few, someone, someone in this church that 
God will be able to use and He'll be able to work through you to be a blessing to many other people. He's looking into families, even, even our families, among our families, for someone in our families. And sometimes maybe, maybe there's not a lot of people in your family that are following after the Lord or, or, or are looking at spiritual things, but He'll look into your family for someone that He can use and through you He he will bring, bring blessings to an entire family. He's looking into a, a group of young people like we have here today, someone in our teen group, someone he can, uh, he can make a difference in their lives, someone uh, whom he can separate unto himself and use to make a difference in their families and schools and in our youth group. And, and God found a man like Abram. He found a man like Jacob. Jacob, the Bible says, if you look in verse 9, it says, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He, he found him in a desert land and in the waste, howling wilderness. And he led him about, he instructed him, and he kept him as the apple of his eye. I can't help when I read that this week, but just to make a connection, you know, Here's the Bible speaking about Jacob, how he found him in a desert land. And when the Lord Jesus Christ found me, he found me as a lost sinner. I, I, hadn't, I wasn't old, I was just a child. I hadn't lived a large portion of my life. I didn't have a lot of history. I didn't have a lot of baggage. I didn't have a lot of things that I looked back over and regretted that I had done, but I was just as much a sinner, just as lost, just as separated from God as someone maybe who didn't come to know the Lord till they were much, much older in life. But the same situation is true. The Lord sought me out and He found me. And He came to me and, and He brought to me uh, the blessing of His Son and and now I know Him as my personal Savior. But, but just remember how the Lord sought us. If you know Jesus as your personal Savior today, it's because He sought you out. He found you. Sometimes we say about people, well, you know, we, they, they found the Lord. Well, you know, the truth of the matter is the Lord found them before they found Him. And they would have never found Him without the Lord finding them first. And so the Lord sought us. He sought us out. And we ought to remember that. God has sought us. He sought us and found us and brought to us the blessings of His Son. And He's looking for someone that will be used of Him through whom He can become a blessing to many. Be that one. Be that one in your family. Be that one in your school, in your youth group, in, your, in this local church that God will be able to use. He sought us. Remember how He sought us. And then write down number two. Remember how He's led us. L-E-D. Led us. Is that right? Led us. It's not lead us, right? Not L-E-A-D. L-E-D. He led us. Verse number 12 says, So the Lord alone did lead him. There it is. And there was no strange God with him. So the Lord alone did lead him. Now I thought about this week as I was reading this, how different things could be in my life. You ever sit and think about it? How very, very different things could be. If, if maybe somewhere in the past I just made one different choice, one different decision, it could have sent my life in a totally opposite direction. I thought, you know, I could be 3,000 miles away from here today if I had just made different choices, different decisions. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that that would have been a positive thing. That could have been a very negative thing. The choices and decisions. Things could be different in relationships. Things could be different in our purpose. Think about how different our purpose in living life could be. The intensity of our commitment to the Lord. You know, we could just as well be very apathetic people about spiritual things, not caring about the things of God. It could be different. 
We, we, we may not be interested in pressing onward and upward and forward for the Lord. Things could be different. They could all be so different, except in my life, I know how the Lord has led me. I know how the Lord has led me. I am where I am because the Lord has led me. He has led me. He put people in my life to help me. People in my life who could help me. I, I'm not like most young pastors and preachers. The young part's my part of that, I guess. But uh, I, I used to, when I was younger, be around younger men in the ministry, and it would just be a very few moments before all these boys would be talking about, well, where'd you go to school, and you know, when did you get called to preach, and it was pretty much the same story. Oh, the Lord called me to preach when I was young, and I went to this Bible college, or I went to that Bible college, and I went right into you know, working for my dad or working at this church or doing this in the ministry. Now, I'm very different. I have a totally different story than that. God didn't call me to preach till after I was married. And uh, I was already a, a student in college. And I had I have a degree from Ohio University. And the Lord didn't call me to preach till I was already in, well into all of that. And so he made some major life changes and changes in direction in my life. And and so I, I don't have the similar story as so many people do, but I can say that though I never had that on-campus college experience, God has put people in my life who has helped lead me to where I am today. Dr. Geiler is a person God put in my life over 30 years ago. And he's taught me, a, uh, he's given me a major in how to be a man of God, how to how to preach and how to pastor and how to try to have a heart for the world and try to help other people to grow and be trained in serving God. And I'm thankful for God, how's, how God has led me. He, he took me to places that I could see the right way to do things, where I could learn how things ought to be done. He's allowed experiences into my life that forged me and made me the person I am. Some of them were pleasant and some of them were hard, but God allowed them. And he led me through those things. The Lord has faithfully led me. And the Lord has brought me to where I am today. I'm thankful. And I don't ever want to forget that God has led me. And I don't want to forget God sought me out. And God has sought us out. And God has led us. And things could be so very different if it weren't for the leadership of God. And I'm thankful for that. I don't want to forget that. I want you to write down a third thing. Remember how he instructs us. How he instructs us. There's nothing like God's word. For those who believe and obey, it changes our lives. If you will, if you will, if you will allow God, He'll do a work in your life that you can't believe that He could do. That you have to, you have to be willing. You have to allow that work. And you you begin to allow that work when you begin to deal properly with God's word. You begin to heed it and allow it to instruct you and to guide you. And it's, it, it's a powerful thing. 2 Timothy 3, he says in verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God is so gracious to have given us His Word. We would not have truth. We, we would not know reality. We, we, would, uh, we would not have these things if God had not given us His Word and gives us the instruction that He gives us in His Word. He has given us the way. The way. He's shown us the way of salvation. He's shown us the way to surrender our lives, how, how, to, be service, uh, how to be a servant, how, how, to, how to allow our lives to be used of Him and, uh, and make a difference. We have the way, God's way, which is far better than our way. It is far fuller than our way. It is much richer than our way. There is more joy in the way of God than there is in any other way. And we thank God that He instructs us. 
He instructs us by His Word. Don't forget that He will instruct you. And then just write down one last thing. Remember how He keeps us. Remember how He keeps us. In verse number 10 in Deuteronomy chapter 32, He said He found Him. He found Him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led Him about. He led Him about. He instructed Him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. God is so gracious to us. He's given us so much that we don't deserve. Just look at Jacob. Jacob was a, he was not a good guy. He was a liar. He was a deceiver. His own brother hated him. Cheated his brother out of the blessing and the birthright. He was afraid of his brother. He, he ran away. He, he felt like his brother was going to kill him. And rightfully so. And then all those years later, when God sent him away from his father-in-law, back to the land where he came from, he knew he was going to have to face Esau. And uh, God, God had given him so much Jacob so much. God had blessed him. God, God favored him. And Jacob certainly didn't deserve it. And we don't deserve to be where we are, who we are, to have what we have. We don't deserve any of it. But, but God keeps us because he loves us. He kept Jacob as the apple of his eye. I think of so many who are no longer serving the Lord some who have departed from the faith, some, some I would have told you, I, I, no, that, that won't happen to them. It can never happen to them. Some have disqualified themselves from scriptural ministry and service. Some have turned back. They turn back into the world. Just like, just like Paul, Paul had to deal with the same thing. At the end of his ministry, at the end of his life, he wrote to Timothy and said, listen, Demas has forsaken me. He, he loves this present world more than he does love the Savior. Demas had to have seen some amazing things just traveling around with the Apostle Paul. But he forsook him. I've seen those things. You, you, you have. You know what? If it weren't for God keeping me, I could very well be right in the middle of a false denomination today just going at it, laboring just as hard as I can labor, just working just as hard as I can work, and ultimately in the end it would be all for nothing. Wouldn't matter. I could be responsible today for leading people away from faith in Christ instead of leading them to faith in Christ. It could be, it could be possible. I, I could have compromised. I could have turned to pleasing men, drawing a crowd, building me a name, I could, have, I could have very well, that all could be true of me. But the Lord keeps us. The Lord keeps us. Everything is all the Lord's. Everything about our life. The work of God's. God's work. It's not mine. The church is His. It's not a man's. The only name that needs to be built and lifted up is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we look at the future, as we are reminded we're still on the journey, God said, remember, as we seek to move forward, as we seek to build, as we seek to strengthen, remember that it was the Lord who sought us out. It was the Lord who sought us out. He separated us. He separated us. We could again, we could be like the multitude, the majority of people in the world today, unaware, not knowing about the Lord, not caring about eternal things, just beaten in one day after another for nothing. We, we could be right there, but the Lord sought us and, and He found us and He separated us from that and, and, and He leads us. Just think where we could be if we let our our life being the control of ourselves just think where we could be today but the Lord leads us he keeps us he instructs us he instructs us he he's given us his word 
We have in his word a, a clear path. We have a clear way that we can walk and walk in that way. And, and we'll know that we'll have the blessings of God. We know we have his hand upon our lives. He, he, he's given us instruction. He instructs us and, and he keeps us. He keeps us. Not because we deserve it, because he's merciful, because he's a gracious God. He has done those things for us. And he is doing them. He is doing them even now. He's working. He's working to find the lost. He's working in your life. You're here tonight because God's working in your life. He, 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 you're here tonight because He's seeking you. You're here tonight because He wants to instruct you and lead you and He wants to have you and keep you. And God is at work. He's working in your life. If you know Him as your personal Savior, He's still going to work in your life. He's still going to keep you and instruct you, lead you and guide you. And so tonight, God told his people, you know, they weren't, they weren't where they were supposed to be. They had a lot of trouble since they left Egypt. They talked about wanting to turn back. They talked about uh, and murmured against Moses leading them as God led him. And they had a long way to go. But, but, but Moses just stopped them. And God said, remind the people. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. He said, go ask your father. He'll show you. He'll show you. He'll remind you. The elders, go ask them. They'll tell thee. They'll tell thee that God has been a faithful God, that he has sought us out while we were nothing, just a remnant in Egypt. And he's brought us out and he's separated us and he's led us through the wilderness and he's going to give us a land one day and, and he's instructed us about how to get there and, and all along the journey he has kept us. And so as we travel on our journey, we'll, we'll only get where we're going and we'll only build and be strengthened if we remember, if we remember all these things that the Lord has been and has done for us in our, in our lives. So we thank, thank him tonight for who he is. Well, we're going to finish tonight, but we want to pray together and we want to give all our hearts and lives an opportunity just to respond to the Lord. In a moment, we'll stand together and we'll sing a verse of a song and we're going to just give an invitation for you just to be obedient to the Lord. It could be today that you're here in church and, and you're unsaved you don't know jesus christ as your personal savior if you died today you do not know that you would go to heaven that's not what god wants for you he wants you to know that you have eternal life he wants you to know the grace of god and the forgiveness of sin he wants you to know that you that you have a home in heaven and that your life has a purpose and that it's far greater far bigger than anything you could ever imagine or ever make it to be and so tonight, we just ask that if you're here this evening, and maybe tonight you realize you need to have someone take the Bible and from God's Word give you instruction about being a born-again believer, about putting your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, we invite you tonight just to respond to Him. Respond. I promise you this, if you will, you'll, you'll never regret it. A million years from now, and you'll, you'll remember that was the greatest day. That was the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. But if you don't, in a day, a day of waiting and hesitating turns into a week, a month, a year, a lifetime, I can promise you that a million years from now, you'll remember and you'll regret forever that you never received the gift of God, forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus Christ. Why don't you respond to him tonight? He's seeking you. He's working in your life. He's brought you to this moment. Don't turn away. Let him do his work in your heart and life. If you're here and you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, whatever the situation, circumstance is that you're in in your life, don't forget all the things the Lord has been for you. Don't forget how he sought you out and found you and separated you. Brought you out of a desert place in the wilderness and 
made you a child of God. Don't forget how He's led you, guided you, and instructed you, and kept you all these many years. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. And what He's done, He'll continue to do. And He'll bring us safely home someday to be with Him. But while we're on this journey, we want to build and strengthen our life and relationship. Why don't you respond to Him tonight and just, just be obedient people. Our memories ought to, ought to just grow our gratitude and thankfulness to God. So let's remember. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name now that you'll have your way in every heart and every life. May we all be obedient people. If someone here has never trusted you as their personal Savior, may tonight be that night, God. You're gracious and merciful. Lord, if we know you as our Savior, may we be thankful people. May we realize how you've blessed us and how you've led and guided us and brought us to where we are and how very different it could be. And God, may we be great, grateful people. And may we let you continue to do your work in our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray.